first lecture of the semester. Thanks everybody for coming out. Slow roll. You've probably heard about it. Hundreds, thousands of people of all ages, ethnicities, and skill levels riding on their bikes through Detroit on Monday nights in the warmer seasons. Maybe you've taken part yourself. Uh, every week, Slow Roll meets at different venues and takes a unique route throughout the city, including both major and minor neighborhoods. Uh, Slow Roll is for everyone. It's a source of city pride. It's an emblem of community. Its name can be heard among chants of rebirth, renaissance, and recovery in discussions about Detroit's future. Slow Roll has expanded into a global network of community rides and has inspired LTU's own Blue Roll, where you guys, some students, come together and cycle around Southfield. The driving force behind Slow Roll is community activist Jason Hall and co-founder Mike McCool. You might recognize Jason from among the pack of Slow Rollers from an iPad commercial from a couple years ago, uh, catching a basketball in a current Pistons commercial, or from speaking engagements around the country. Please welcome Jason Hall. We're just gonna get it out of the way right now, so we're gonna go ahead and play this. Hang on. So we can get it out of the way. Everybody's like, ah. starting at obviously the beginning and I sort of go to a where we are now and then where we're going into the future. But before I even get into that, I want you to keep in mind that this didn't start out of an idea of making this massive movement, okay? Um, it really started out of selfishness, okay? I had uh, lived away from Detroit for a brief moment and I had just moved back and I was really kind of at the time out of love with Detroit. Okay, I, I, I was out of touch with it because I hadn't been here for a while, but also what was going on I couldn't connect to or get really into. So a couple of friends of mine own a bike shop, wheelhouse bike shop downtown on Atwater. And I was intrigued with you know, them being new entrepreneurs and what they were doing, and they suggested to me, Jason, if you're falling out of love with Detroit, you should try getting out on a bike and, and seeing it on two wheels. And I thought to myself, whatever, man, you know, I'm like, that's kid stuff. But I took them up, and, and in reality, my job was only a mile away from my house, so I should have been riding a bike anyway. And so I started riding a bike, and immediately I started to feel a transformation in, within myself. Because um, the first day I rode, this lady, I remember this lady going, hey, baby. And I'm, I, I'm going, hey. <laughs> All right. And so then I started saying that. Whenever I would ride past somebody, I would go, hey. And they say, hey. So by the time I got to wherever I was going, whatever mood I was in when I started, I was automatically in a better mood because of all this positive energy that I was experiencing out on the bike. And at the same time, I was also feeling like a resurgence within myself because I was getting out of what we call the glass bubble, okay? The glass bubble was the car. First thing you do when you get in your car is you shut the world out by shutting the door, you turn on the radio, you might get on your text, which you're not supposed to do, but you're not really feeling what's going on around you or, or the environment. And so, 
Mike, my partner and I at the time, we both happened to have some time off um, because I was actually working in media at the time and I thought I would have this job forever. Um, I remember my mom saying, oh my gosh, you got a job in the media, they're always going to need reporters and directors. And that was before computers came and took my job away. Uh, so I had some time on my hands, so Mike, I started going to Mike and I said, Mike, you got to come out ride with me, man. You got to see what's going on. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing the city in a whole different way. I'm meeting different people. So Mike and I started riding together. Well, bike rides already exist. There's one in particular that exists around the world. It's called Critical Mass. Anybody heard of Critical Mass? Critical Mass, in its inception, is a, a beautiful thing. I, I, I love it. Okay, what it is is everybody gets together the last Friday of the month all over the world, and they ride in mass to show that bikes are part of traffic. But what was happening in Detroit, in our, with ours, is it was becoming really aggressive. Okay? It, I mean, it, it is, in a way, a protest. But we were taking it a little too far. Okay? I was starting to see people disrespecting people on their porches. I was starting to see people littering. And, and those weren't things that I was into. So I went to Mike and I said, you know what, we should start our own thing, man. And like, not start it to be in competition, but let's just start something that we can be proud of what we do, you know, and bring our friends together. And really, we just wanted to hang out. Mike and I are big fans of hanging out. And uh, a lot of this actually came out over red wine. That's a whole other story. <laughs> that. So Mike and I sat down, and we were playing video games, because that's what we were doing with our time off, two grown men playing lots of Call of Duty. And we decided to start this bike ride. And I looked at Mike, and I'm like, Mike, what, what, what are we going to call it? You know, we, I'm like, we got to call it something that lets people know that everybody's welcome. Okay, we, because the traditional biker you think of is in spandex and they're going fast and they got a helmet on. We wanted people to feel comfortable just coming out in whatever they wore or however they felt. So we said, let's call it Slow Ride. And we were like, no, Slow Ride just seems like whatever. And then we rested on it and Mike's like, whoa. He's like, for some reason it just feels good. I'm like, okay, man, hey. We've been thinking about it far too long anyway, so I'm like, whatever you want to call it. So we ended up going out and sort of just hitting our friends up. And I remember at this time, we weren't trying to change the world. We were just trying to change our personal environment. So we started calling our friends, and we started harassing them into riding bikes with us. And at that time, I actually lost more friends than I made because I harassed so many of them into bike riding. And if I had my keynote, you'd see that. Um, but the first ride we did had three people. First official ride, three people. And that was including Mike and myself. So three of us go out on the city and we're riding around and we're just going through any neighborhood. At this time we're deciding like there's no particular route that we're going to do, we're just going to go ride. And so as we're riding, we're starting to do, pick up this thing that we do now, even to this day, is if we see somebody riding a bike towards us, we yell, you're going the wrong way, come with us. And so it got crazy because people started doing it. <laughs> people just turn around and we're like, okay. So one of the first gentlemen that I ever met, um, his name is Hal Williams, uh, he actually pulled me aside. He's like, and this is what's crazy about Slow Roll too. He's like a 65-year-old dude. And I'm like interacting with this guy. He said, Jason, you, don't, you guys don't know what you have here. He's like, people are here to ride bikes with you and go wherever you're going to take them. You can show them the good side, the bad side. You can do whatever you want. And that was when it first went off in our mind that we could make a difference in people's lives. We said, okay, well, everybody's coming down here from the city and they think it's bad. Let's take them where it's bad. And let's take them where it's good, okay? So then we started going to different neighborhoods and picking out you know, stuff that we thought would be cool little landmarks to show people. And like, keep in mind, this is our first year. So we finished out with probably seven people. The first year average, seven people. So the next year, we go, to the, we go back to the drawing board and we're like, how can we re-engage people? Because it's just a ride now. We're just riding around the landmarks, but we're not really making an impact. What can we do? And so we started really researching the city of Detroit ourselves. And let me tell you, I'm a lifelong Detroiter. And there were things that I was just finding out that were intriguing to myself. So then we would go and we would take a picture at whatever spot and then we post that. So, well, one of the photos that got us in a little bit of trouble, but actually got us a lot of people, was uh, the mayor heard, had heard about us. And so we said, we had this saying, if we're going to make it weird, let's make it really weird. So we actually took 150 people the next year to his front porch. And we actually took our picture right on the front lawn of the Nindian Mansion. 
that thing kind of took off. <laughs> and so then, we're, now keep in mind, we're in Dallas. In our second year, we're coming back, we're doing landmarks. Um, we're growing so fast. At this point, we're hitting 150. The next week, we hit 300. And, and Mike looks at me and he says, dude, all right, what are we going to do? He's like, we've created this thing, and we're, there's two ways we can look at this. Either the cops are going to come get us, so we need to run, or we need to stop doing it because it's gaining this momentum and it's a parade now. You know, we can't really just go out and ride. And Mike said, "No, nah, man, we gotta, we gotta go with this. We gotta keep rolling forward on the momentum that we started because we're we're making an impact now. Okay, now we're starting to see letters from people that are saying, I'm, I'm on dialysis and I go to dialysis every Monday, and now I can walk because of slow." Work. And then we start getting letters saying, you rolled through my neighborhood, and I haven't seen anybody on that street in 20 years. Like, think about that. I have a letter from a woman who says she has not seen a person on her street other than a mailman in 20 years. And all of a sudden, we bring 300 people down her street. So then we started to evolve with that. I said, well, how can we make more of an impact on the city? I said, OK, it's cool that we're showing people cool neighborhoods, and it's cool that we're getting people out and they're riding bikes. So how much more of an impact can we make? And so in our second year, we used to start and finish at the same, at the same spot. Well, a friend of mine called me, and he owns a restaurant downtown, and he said, Jason, do you love me? And I said, of course, man, what's going on? He said, well, how come you don't bring any of that money to my restaurant? And I said, that is genius. We hadn't thought about that. We were actually, we tinkered around, because we, but we were scared that we would lose people by moving. But we felt it our duty, once again, because what Vaughn was saying, is that when we do go to restaurants, we take 300 people to a spot. They're going to eat. They're going to drink. And that's going to change the economy for a restaurant in Detroit on that day. So then we started moving. We started calling restaurants. We started saying, hey, is it cool if we come by? Just so you know, we're bringing 300 people with us. And they, of course, would say, please come by. So our second year, going into our third year, we started doing it at little, small, little restaurants, because that's what we would fit in. But now we're moving into year three, and we're really getting this massive attention, okay? I think year three uh, is when I actually did my first TEDx. Anybody know what TEDx is? Yeah, I got a call from uh, Charlie, who does TEDx in Detroit. And this is also a reoccurring thing with me. I'm never going to say no. So Charlie called me, and he said, hey, Jason, have you heard about Slow Roll? You, you, know, you guys are awesome. Would you mind speaking at TEDx? And I said, sure, man, I'll be there. And then I hung up the phone and called my friend Dante and said, all right, man, what's TEDx? <laughs> so I did TEDx, and I went in there, and uh, I talked about what the ride had become for me, OK? Because it, it's more than a ride now. It's become a way of life, and it's changing lives. And it's not only changing lives, but it's changing communities. OK, now we're dealing with people like Focus Hope, where we can take people to an entire neighborhood and clean that neighborhood up. Because with the attention that we've got, Okay, our ride, I said, was at 400 probably. By this time, we're hitting 1,000. Okay, third year, we're hitting 1,000 people. Now, once again, keep in mind, this is 1,000 people on a Monday night in the city of Detroit. Okay, they're there. To, there's, no, there's no police presence. They're literally trusting these two guys every week with their lives. Okay, but by this time, we start to have all these people come up to us and volunteer. And so we said, okay, well, we can't do this by ourselves, man. So we need to start to build a team of people that can take ownership of this ride and help us grow. So then I had 30 people to come up to me and volunteer to come every single week and keep the ride moving. So what we call them the squad. So they show up every week, and they leave no one behind. So at this point, once again, you're talking 30 people, 1,000 people on a ride every Monday, keeping it moving, and we're funding this out of our pockets. Okay, so like inner tubes, tools, all that's coming out of our pockets because everybody's clear about the vision, what we're doing for the city. Well, then we get a phone call a little after TEDx and uh, this lady says, Jason, hey, we've heard about Slow Roll. Um, would you mind telling that story to me? So I told her the story and, I, and I'll tell you at the time I was actually really busy. So it went like this. Yeah, we do Slow Roll every Monday. I'll come show up at 6.30 30, talk to you later. And I hung up the phone. She called me back the next day and she said, I loved your story. Would you mind telling that story to my boss? Sure. We do slow roll, we meet every Monday, 6 30 a.m. We go to the restaurant, talk to you like, hang on the phone. The next day, they call and they say, Would you mind telling that to six people in a conference call? And that's when I say, Okay, who am I talking to again? And they said, Well, we're going to send you an NDA. 
Anybody know what an NDA is? I, I didn't, this is another Jason moment. I don't know what an NDA is. They're like, we're gonna send you an NDA, we're gonna sign it, and then we'll tell you. And I'm like, yep, sign it. I'm like, send it, man, be ready. So it comes through the fax, and it says Apple on the bottom of the, of the sheet. So of course my heart explodes because I have all Apple products in my house, and I'm immediately thinking I'm getting a free computer out of this somehow. <laughs> So I tell the story to the, to the people, and uh, they're like, yeah, we love your story, but we'll get back to you on what's going down, you know, whatever. Two weeks later, they call me and they say, okay, we got a green light, we're gonna shoot this. And I said, uh, uh, shoot what? Green light? <laughs> shoot. They said, well, we're gonna come to town, we're gonna shoot a documentary. I'm like, documentary? They're like, yep, we're gonna shoot a documentary on Slow World. I'm like, once again, it's Apple. I don't care what they wanted to shoot at that time. Just give me a laptop. And so, they literally uh, come to town. I, I, this is how I found out Apple was in town. I went to walk my dog one morning, and I'm in my pajamas, and all these people are running up and down my street. And I'm like, what's going on? And I look, and I see one of the casting directors. And I'm like, oh, Kathy. And she's like, yeah, we're blocking the whole street down for the shoot, so we have to get everybody signed off. So like immediately, I'm in my like half underwear pajamas with my dog, like, oh, okay, this is about to get really crazy. I never asked why they found us until last year, and that's a whole separate story. But we ended up shooting this beautiful piece about Detroit, okay? And when they came to town, they didn't say, Jason, we have this idea of what we want to shoot. They said, we want you to talk about what you, where you actually go, what you actually do. And so immediately in my mind, it's another opportunity for me to spread that wealth around the city. So I picked all my friends' restaurants and bars, and we shot in all of those. We shot over seven days. And it aired, and then all of a sudden, we get a call from 100 cities globally overnight. They, uh, we, we were already in 10 cities, we expanded, but 100 cities. And when they call, I actually talk to every single person. And, they, and, and I tell you what, 90% of them always say, how can we be like Detroit? They don't say, how can we get a slow roll? Well, they want one, but they are blown away by the fact that Detroit can come together in this way every single week. And now they own it. Now we're being actually grown. We're actually a legitimate business now. You know, I always joke that in, your, you know, in the fourth year, we were up to 4,000 people running from the cops every Monday. So when we got, finally got to a point where the city called me, and then they said, we got to work with you. And they said, because the energy you're bringing to the city and the money that you guys are putting into these places is right up there with the Red Wings and the Lions because people literally come here. We have an aerial photo of the line off 75, right where we were starting in Greetown. It goes almost three miles of cars in the exit, and they all have bikes on top. And that's what's happening in the city right now. Man, it's been so crazy. Our journey has, like I said, it started as this like hobby, and now I'm the president of this thing, and we're spreading money all over the world, and then I get a call from a good friend of mine, and he says, Jason, you know, we love Slow Roll, the positive energy that you guys are doing. We want to give you some space. And I said, well, where do you want to, I mean, that's cool, what's going on? And they're like, you ever heard of the Brewster Wheeler Recreation Center? Anybody heard of, ever heard of that, Brewster Wheeler? Yeah. It's actually the place where Joe Lewis learned how to box, okay? And they actually recently, you know, they tore down the projects over, over there, but the only thing they left standing was the actual gym. But we were actually lucky enough to be involved in a deal, a $50 million deal to acquire that building. And we were getting space in there along with Alternatives for Girls and the Detroit Chess Club. Because Slow Roll, once again, it's a beacon. You know, now we are making policy. You know, we started out just two kids, right? Well, not kids, I mean, two old dudes. <laughs> but I mean, like, we just started out two guys riding bikes. And the other thing about this is we didn't do any of this with corporate dollars. And, you know, we, we started this. I'll tell you how much we started this with. The first thing we ever did cost $700, and Mike and I split that. That's the only money we've ever spent out of our pockets on this. Well, until recently I bought some stuff from my friends. But, um, the power of community coming together is my message. The power of all of you working together, okay? It, it used to be, you know, you had to know somebody, you had to do, you had to go and do all this stuff. But now it's about knowing the person next to you and, and reaching out to them and joining them. Okay, because we wouldn't be here 
Like even if we had all the money, without the community and the people coming together to make this thing work. You know, now we're a board of five, and it's insane. We used to call restaurants, but now everybody calls us. So last year we had bikes for the first time ever on the Grand Prix track down in Detroit. Uh, this year I think we're gonna actually ride our bikes into Ford Field, onto Ford Field. Uh, we, I mean, what I try to do is build the experience for people, because it's not just about coming and riding a bike. You get, it's about meeting the people around you and, and really coming together because, you know, we all know about 8 Mile. You know, we all know the realities of you know, the movie, but we know about one side and the other. And I think what Slow Roll's done is everybody's looking at each other on the side. You know, the suburbs are looking at each other going, hmm, what's over there? And we're over here going, yo, what's over there? And now we have broken down that barrier because people forget once you get on a bike, that's the common denominator. And, it, and everything else is out the window. So that's where we're at. Um, I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anything. I mean, I'm really trying to stress to you guys how the power is with you. Okay, because, man, I'm trying to think of how many times that I might, I, I, I'll throw them under the bus. I called Red Bull maybe 100 times in my life, 100 times. Last year, they called me. And now everybody calls me. And not only they call me, they call me to do things like give helmets to kids. Uh, we're actually doing a bike ride with kids around the Capitol, okay? Like, and I can tell you, when we asked them to do that, they were like, we would never let this happen. But Slow Roll is awesome and we want it in Lansing. So I don't know if I give you guys a little insight into what we are. I kind of like talk off the cuff sometimes. So I leave some, some holes and some things. So if you have any questions, by all means, shoot them at me because that helps me out immensely because I'll go, oh, that, that's right, that story, this story. So has anybody got any questions about, we, I'll tell you, we ride every Monday. Uh, we'll be meeting at 7.30 this year because part of our partnership with the city is they get to tell us what to do sometimes and they like us to start a little bit later so you won't be getting caught in traffic for all those people who hate me. Got caught in traffic. Friend of mine, funny story, uh, I used to say, people would always say, Jason, uh, I love your ride, but, but I, I don't like getting caught in traffic. And I would say, well, get a bike. I had this like cocky mentality. I said, get a bike. Well, then my friend one day comes up to me. He says, man, I love your ride. And I love what you do. But I got caught in traffic the other day. And I said, get a bike. And he said, I had to go to the bathroom <laughs> real bad. <laughs> they didn't go for 45 minutes. That's how long they sat at that, like 45 minutes. So that's one of my funny stories. But anybody got any questions? Come on now. Um, so is uh, the status, is, has there ever been a, try, a partnership with Smart? Or is that the... Yeah, 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 we, we actually, we did some, we talk to Smart all the time. They have the Rack on Front program, so we've done some promotion for that. But we really try to get people to ride the bikes. The suburb is close, the suburbs are close enough. And you can just ride your bike to us. Like people always say, well, Jason, would you start one in Southfield? And I say, well, why? I mean, not just the Southfield, but Detroit's five minutes away. You know, like, and so we do try to work with Smart. We try to work with all municipalities. We have to, really. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to. Trust me, everybody in DOT, they all know who we are because we affect bus routes on Mondays. So that's how deep we go. Like, we actually meet with the city all year round to, like, change timing on lights affect bus routes, I, I, we get a bill from the city, and I would say, why is the bill this much and this much? And they said, because we had to actually go out and reprogram all this stuff to make it happen. And that's pretty wild to me that, you know, you can look on your Apple phone for traffic, and it's us, like if you see the red line. So I do you know, that kind of stuff. But we're willing to work with everybody. We're a community-based group. So anything we can do to further any type of bicycle advocacy, or any, you know, any type of transportation, you know, I'm really, that's part of my evolution too, is I used to be about bikes, 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 but I'm actually more about mobility, period. You know, people need to get from A to B, not in a car. And that's what's going on here, is we don't have safe sidewalks, or way wide enough sidewalks, or a green pass. And that's my new motivation, is actually going a step beyond the bike and into full mobility. Yes, sir? Is that, is that the Dequindercut, are you referring to the Dequindercut? It's actually kind of railroad, it used to go around the outside of the 
I, I don't know if that's the cut because I know they're using the old yard railway for the Dequindra cut, and they do intend to link it all the way to Hamtramck eventually, and that's you know that's all part of the plan. Detroit would have never thought that that far forward, you know what I mean? So it's good that we're getting now bike lanes. Jefferson Avenue just got its first protected bike lane, which is you know they got the cones up, so now cars can't run you. Well, they can, but it's a little hard when they run you over. They really got to try hard. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, when you were like, when you when you guys were little, uh, little company, how did you reach out to people to let them know about Slow Road? Like, did you did you like hand out flyers or did you like knock on doors or what did you do? Uh, well, what really what we first did is we're big fans of really reaching out to people. So if I had a number, I would just call you. But what really kind of put us on the map at that time was uh, we started using uh, Instagram. When we started figuring out how to make flyers with our iPads, I could literally take a picture right there and make a flyer in 30 seconds and shoot that thing out. And, and the power of photos is, you know, is amazing. And like I say, it, that photo of the mayor's house, that probably tripled our ride in a week because everybody was like, these guys are nuts. Like, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, that's how we did Instagram. We're, we're real social network heavy. We don't pay for advertising, so that's how we get it done. And then I'm, I also speak all over the world, so that spreads the word as well, too, because I'm always like, come ride, come ride, come ride. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the riots. So it's everyone's welcome. Mm -hmm. We have thousands, so is it all ages? Yeah. Yeah, you know, so I mean, yeah, slow is everybody. Like, I mean, it's so crazy how I've seen people come up into, okay, so they come to Slow Roll and they maybe have rented a bike or borrowed a bike. And the next week, they bought a new one. And the week after that, it's got like 50 lights on it. And like, I mean, so everybody is on this ride and that's what brings people out, you know? There's not one bike ride, the only, I maybe have had one or two bike riders ever not like Slow Roll and their reason was we went too slow. But everybody else is like amazed at how they can come to, again to, and then we also make it accessible. So what we do is we go to the restaurants and we used to do like the Whitney. And if you're being at the Whitney, it's expensive. So what I said to the Whitney is if you want us here, you gotta give us a $5 plate that pe that's real food and you gotta give us cheaper <laughs> drinks. So people know what the food tastes like and they come back. And so people would come and get to experience stuff outside of just the ride, but food they never got to taste or any of that stuff. And so that's what we really, like I said, we really work hard to make people go, oh, wow, man. Like, I never thought this could happen. Has anybody equated um, the slow roll to a reduction in the primary on Monday nights? I can, I can tell you, we actually did this year. Um, we Angels Night Patrolled in Detroit. We put together 30 teams, um, and you know some of them were smaller, some of them were bigger, but this was the lowest year they said ever in Detroit history for Angel Nights fires, and I think it was something like a six. I mean, it was like a ridiculous reduction. So I do like to t I like to take credit for some of the stuff that we do because there's nothing more menacing than a mass of people coming through a neighborhood like that, you know. And it's if we really it's funny. Um, we have a, we have rules that we have a, what I call our code of conduct, and the people really do own this ride. So like if you like do anything to threaten it, they're like on it. So if you like litter on the ride, I've literally watched like 20 people pull that person over <laughs> and be like pick it up, <laughs> you know, right now. So yeah, slow roll. Yes, ma'am. How do you maintain that kind of kind of tone and vibe? You said you have presences in other cities now. You know, I'm thinking I'm from LA. I just moved here. Mm -hmm. Months, yeah. and it shuts half the city down, and people either love it or hate it. Like it's not, For it sure. doesn't build community; it actually breaks apart. So, how do you maintain kind of the tone and vibe across the different locations? Well, what's cool about Slow Roll is it's there's only a couple things that we as, like to keep the same. The logo is going to be the same in every city, and our code of conduct. But other than that, we want every city to have its own flavor and its own thing. So we don't go there and say. This is how we do it in Detroit, and this is how you should do it. I actually just got back from Silver Lake riding out in LA, and I was actually doing research on how we could make that happen, and I was meeting with the guys who do, with Ramel and those guys who do something. But, uh, so, 
it's up to the city to really maintain how they do their thing. And what's cool is we can now pass along the knowledge to every city, and then every city gets to kind of choose how they want to be. So Cleveland, they don't want 5,000 people. They only want like 100. And we're cool with that, because that's still part of the movement. Okay, so we don't really hold it like you have to be just like us. We only want you to be like us in the sense that you care about your community, you're trying to make global change through bicycling, and you have the same tenants as us. And then you can pay me some money. No, I'm just kidding. Don't pay me money. But how do you control the number? If, if say, you're at 1,000 and mm -hmm. Cleveland only wants 100, then they have to cut it off? They, they don't promote like we do. You know, like, we get 1,000 because we're, I'm on Channel 4 every Monday, and I'm working for Apple. They don't even, they just fly her. They're literally like, here's a hand flyer, here's a hand flyer. I mean, that's their thing. Chicago is a little bit different, you know. Buffalo, they almost, they, they got a thousand riders, but they follow our model of like getting the word out there a little bit more. Other cities just sort of choose, pick and choose how they want to do their thing. Yes? What's the record number of riders you have? Record number of riders, you know, it's funny because Every year, every ride, everybody, because they're just, they're so massive, everybody's always like, there was 5,000 people this week, and I'm like, I think there was like a thousand. <laughs> so, I'm going to say, maybe 4,500, 4, 4,500 we've, we've done, um, but we will destroy that record this year easily, because the amount of growth that we've had already in the off-season, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll add at least 2,000. And I'm actually, to come back to Cyclovia, I'm actually talking to the city right now about doing one in Detroit and shutting down downtown Detroit for a day. You know, it sounds like it, you know, I understand where you're coming from, how it's like, it tears community, but the community needs to understand that you shouldn't be in a car every day. You should be walking and riding bikes. And so if we have to make you do that to get it, because it's just for your own good. It's not like we're doing it because we're jerks. You know, we're saying, no, look, we're trying to create a more mobile way of living. So let's shut down all this garbage and stop the pollution for a minute and let's just all have a big kumbaya and hang out downtown. Because cycle wheels are awesome. Do you collaborate with the tour Detroit people though? We do, we work with them in the sense of like we'll sag their ride every year and we put a team together. But they're so, they're doing their own thing. You know, they're, we're, they're our big brother still. You know, they had 7,000 last year, I think. So we're still looking up to them. But we're, so I know actually Kelly and those guys who do it. So, you know, I, I work with them, but we're busy doing our own thing. We're working on that too. We're actually working with uh, the city of Windsor right now and a group called Windsor Heats. Because you actually can't take, you know, you can't take your bike on the bridge. And it's actually, you can't even take your bike on the front rack of the buses anymore in the tunnel. And so we're trying to get people to understand that Detroit, downtown, I'm actually closer to Windsor than I am to the Burbs at times. So we're starting this campaign called We Are Local. And we're trying to close that gap because pre-9-11, you know, I used to go get food over there all the time because you didn't have to wait for 45 minutes sometimes or, or the hassle where you wouldn't get pulled over. So we're trying to restore that. And if we can do that through bicycling, you know, that's great. We like to hold people over the coals. And Vince are saying they want a slow roll. We're saying, okay, if you want a slow roll, then you have to help us close that, okay? Other than that, you know, I, it's not that I don't want Windsor to get one. And I, honestly, maybe they'll give them one, but I like to like it a little bit. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir? You talked about how this grassroots movement started the city changing stoplights on Wednesday, right, or on Monday, and, and moving bus routes around. Has the city also responded to some infrastructural change that doesn't occur on just Mondays, but other times specifically maybe bike-friendly or at least bike-savvy uh, policy? They're getting a little, you know, one of our main concerns in Detroit right now is lights, our lighting. We don't, a lot of our city not lit. So what's cool is they, we work together. So like if we pick a route and it's not lit, you got a week. You know what I mean? Because we can't keep moving routes. And, and they want to make that change. So they, they use us as a guy. They love when you call and say, all these are out. We're doing a thing with uh, Loveland, if you guys ever heard of that, Motor City Mapping. Um, it's a, basically, it's an incredible program where they are mapping the entire city out, every property. Okay, so you can click every single property in the city of Detroit, see a picture of it, 
see if it's taxed, you know, if it's available, if it's a lot, whatnot. Well, Lovely got a hold of us and they said, hey, you know, we, there's a lot of houses that we haven't blexed That's what they call blexing, taking a picture, I guess. And so they're like, wouldn't it be cool if we partnered up with Slow Roll and on Mondays you guys all took photos of all the uh, vacant stuff that you passed and blexed it for us. And I'm like, that's ingenious because not only can you do that on Slow Roll, but if you get into the idea of it, you can do it anytime you want to do it. And people don't even know it exists. So I do love the fact that people are starting to use slow roll for what it really, really can be. And so yeah, and we got some, and we, you know, it's funny, I actually, I, little, little, little something about me, you know, I didn't graduate from college, so it's really funny to me sometimes when like, I get asked to be on a board, or asked my, for my input on something that's really like, something like that, but I always get asked stuff about the city and roads and stuff like that, and I'm like, dude, I just ride a bike. I mean, I'm learning about it, but, you know, it's weird to me, but that's, yeah. Can you anyone? Sorry, I'm rambling. What part? I think her first. Can you talk about how you chose the routes and what neighborhoods you decided to um, go through to show people? Mm -hmm. When we first started, we just kept it pretty local. Pretty, I, I live in Corktown. My partner lives in Woodbridge. So we kept it pretty downtown because that's what we were comfortable with. But then uh, after that, it was just, I have a knowledge of neighborhoods, so then we started stretching it. We have Palmer Park, we have Rosedale Park, we have so, so then I started thinking, okay, how can we stretch? So that's what, how I would make the route. Well, and then I also try to keep it between 10 and 12 miles. Okay, so we're from wherever our start point is, 10 or 12 miles from there is how I, I build it. Um, now I build the routes by, uh, man, I look at points that need attention. Okay, so I say, we need to go down second because People aren't realizing the dumping that's going on on the second with tires. So we try to do things like that when we route. Um, we also have to route around everything that's going down. So M1 with the rail, we can't go on Woodward. So we have to take all that stuff into, I make every single route, and trust me, it takes me about an hour to make every single route thinking, and then I can ride it, and, uh, but that's how we do it. It's just, I really try to, once again, create the experience. This year, we're partnering up with the city and this is what's really cool to me is because my, my goal has always been to show all of Detroit. We always left from downtown. And you can't obviously ride your bike all the way to the west side and back. So the city's going to let me use community centers now all over the city to start and finish. So now I can start in uh, a Brightmoor or a Rosedale Park and really, once again, showcase all of Detroit, not just the, the cool restaurants and bars that we have. Oh, oh. Oh, that's a good question. Not really. I mean, I come from a family that's always been, we're a union family, so I've always been from a place of working with each other and giving back in community on that sense. But no, I never like was a part of a group or anything like that. And it's, it, was, it was weird because I wanted this to belong to the city. You know, people came to me and they said, Jason, do you want to make it a for-profit or a non-profit? And I said, I want it to be a non-profit because I want this to belong to the people. And so that's, that's me, but now I do a ton of stuff in the community because like I said, I'm working with the American Heart Association, if anybody's involved in that, you know, American Heart. I mean, heart is one of our number one killers, heart disease. And so I'm working with them to get that word out. Um, I'm working with the Michigan Trails and Greenways Coalition to get more word out about lanes. Uh, I'm working with, man, so many, yeah. Yeah, you can tell with me. Yeah. Uh, I've, not, I've never done it. I've never done it. No, but if you're involved with them at all, like you know, oh, like okay. a, well, a trip through you know, like an urban home. No, we haven't. We haven't worked. I mean, not saying we wouldn't, and I'm sure we will eventually hear from them. But we are just sort of, sort of really starting to get recognized by legitimate, well, by, by other bike groups because for years we didn't wear helmets. Um, and they were, people didn't like that. It wasn't that we didn't wear helmets, we just feel like it's, it's not the law and I can't make people do something. I can say, please do it. But, so a lot of groups are, were just starting to get on their radar. So I'm sure we'll hear from them soon. Yes, sir? I would imagine that uh, while well, for me, I have a question. Um, you know, you have worked with community groups uh, giving youth uh, alternatives to other behavioral activities like crime or mischief. 
Yep, we definitely do. I, I do well. Shoot, we gave, we, I, what I do is I work with all the bike groups that work with kids. So Southwest Bikes, they have a heavy kid component. Um, the Hub downtown. So I work with both of them as much as I can to get helmets to kids. And really, I like to like talk to kids because, you know, as a as an African American male, it's sometimes we think we're in shortage. So I like to talk to kids about getting out and being themselves and following their dreams and following their goals. So I really, that's where I connect with kids. Is I try to, I actually used to speak at St. Clair Shores Middle Schools. Um, I really try to get out and just get the word out that you can actually be cool riding a bike first off, because they look at biking as like a nerdy thing to do. So first you gotta change that perception and, and that's where I work hardest to do. So I walk in and I say, hey, you think I'm gonna come in here and have click clacky shoes on, but I actually like, have sneakers like you and live like you. So that's where I try to get them off the, sh off the street in that way. Do you get them into the slow roll on Monday night? We actually do. We do a ton of stuff. We give away, we give away bikes, we give away helmets. What we did uh, three years ago for a hot second, and it really was well in the, well received in the community, and I'm thinking about bringing it back, is I would take my GoPro to, uh, and well, the city actually told me that I needed to start talking to community about slow roll. So I would go through a neighborhood that we were riding through and I would stop somebody and I'd say, hey, have you heard of slow roll? And I would take them with my GoPro talking about slow roll. And I'd say, if I brought you a bike, would you ride slow roll? And then if they do, I would take them riding the bike and then I would take them afterward and see the transformation from them on their porch being kind of like, whatever, who is this kid with the, the GoPro like in my face to literally going, wee! on a bike, you know, and asking where they can get a new one. So that's where we really try, like, try to get people on the bike and, and out there. Yeah. Oh. Did you get a rap top? I did not get a rap top from Apple. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny people ask me. I've never received one free item from Apple. <laughs> not one time. And, and even funnier is I did this series of talks all over the country, and they would pick a moderator at every spot. And then we give a moderator a free iPad for moderating the thing, but then they never gave me one. I even said, I'm in the commercial, guys. <laughs> nope. And when the new iPhone came out, I called them and said, hey, who do I talk to about getting one? They said, well, you can go to the store. <laughs> so they're not, they're just like everybody else. And I waited 30 days. <laughs> Have you thought about uh, bringing Detroit outside of Detroit, or vice versa, like uh, the suburbs around that go there? Well, we, I mean, we're always trying to get the suburbs to come down to us, you know what I mean? That's, that's, our, that's every day. Um, I, it's not that I'm not heavy on the push for the suburbs. I'm just from Detroit, and I, and I like to give it to people who I think need it. And in Detroit, they need it. Like, Birmingham, no offense, they don't need me out there being like, spend money. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to happen anyway. So we don't really do it. You know, we don't really do too much verbs, you know. It's funny, I, I rarely even leave the city nowadays unless I'm leaving the, the, leaving the city. But if I'm like, I'm strictly Detroit now. If I have meetings, I'm usually like, oh, you should come to Detroit because I want people to see Detroit all the time. So we try to keep it pretty Detroit. What is the percentage of people from the suburbs come down to I, I would like to say 50, maybe 60, 40. Is that, is that yeah, about 60, 40. Uh, 60 from the suburbs, but that number is changing, you know, because man, if you've seen any of our home, you gotta watch the video. Uh, you'll see, in the, in the, it's only a minute long. Uh, you'll see like the light up bikes, if you've ever seen them. The, so these guys, like, okay, I remember there was one bike club, East Side Riders, boom, one club. There's 20 different bike clubs now, and these are all black, black bike clubs. Like, it's crazy to see how, once again, they bought into this. They all started out just like everybody else, and now these guys are riding $5,000 bikes with stereo systems on the back and starting their own clubs. So yeah, that, it's probably 64. Yes, sir? So it was only last year you discovered how Apple discovered you. You want to talk about how they discovered you? Ah, you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I would never ask. People would always say, how they find you? And I said, look, I don't care. And they found me, sweet. Like last summer I said, you know, John, excuse me, to John, I gotta know how you guys found out about me. And he goes, well, I gotta be, it was probably your TEDx. He's like, your TEDx probably got you out on the radar. 
Um, that TEDx was huge. I, I had a speech written. Uh, okay, so I found out I was doing it, and for two weeks I talked into a laptop. Okay, that Dante's a tutor, and Dante said, what you gotta do is write this speech and practice talking into the laptop you know, for 12 minutes. That's how much you get. And so I did that, I'm in my bedroom like, hey. So finally I go to, go to TEDx, and I run into this lady that I used to work with in the arts department at the YMCA. And she says, how are you, nervous? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty nervous. I've never done this before. And she goes, you wrote your speech? I'm like, yeah. And she just touches me right here, and she goes, come from your heart, baby. Come from your heart. So I threw the speech out, went out there, and winged 12 minutes. And then Charlie was like, give him three more minutes, which is like unheard of. Then I ended up crying because my friend Hal, who I talked about earlier, actually passed by getting hit by a car. And it went super viral. And so I think that's what uh, you know, it got me on their radar was probably that. He said that that was that. And then once he started digging, I mean, we had already done a ton of stuff, and he, you know, so he, he, all he had to do was tap into whatever. So I think it was TEDx. Anyone else? Yep. Just a uh, full-time job for you. If it is, how do you derive an income? <laughs> Good question. It is a full-time job, and I'm poor, so if you want to donate. No, <laughs> what we do, uh, if this is a full-time job for me, luckily uh, I do work for Apple. Um, I've been lucky enough to sort of create a thing for myself with those guys that I keep getting called back. It's funny, they, I was just talking to my, I call her my handler, her name's MJ. And she goes, dude, I'm not even supposed to be talking to you right now. She was like, you were supposed to shoot that commercial and be done. She's like, two years later, you're still talking? Like, what's going on? So I'm lucky enough to have created something with Apple, and then I do public speaking now, um, and then we are in a position now that we're a 501c3, hopefully we'll be able to give me a little salary coming up soon, but, uh, as long as I got enough money to eat, which is pretty cool nowadays, actually I don't have to pay for a lot of food. That's the other side effect of running a cool bike ride, is every restaurant I go in Detroit pretty much, they're like, it's on us because we bring so many people throughout the year that they're just like, thank you. So if I have enough money to eat, I'm good. So that's how I, I just, I call it the hustle. You know what I mean? Um, just keep it moving and uh, hopefully get a good sponsor this year, a couple good sponsors. Anyone else? Oh, sorry, yep. Um, does Slow Row have a headquarters? It, as of now, it does not, but that's what the Brewster Wheeler will be when it's done, okay? The Brewster Wheeler will be our, our uh, world headquarters. And I tell you, it's crazy. We're working with the city on this thing. It's sat you know, vacant for probably 30 years. We just pumped 94,000 gallons of water out of the basin. That's just one thing we have to do. <laughs> the other good thing is we actually, uh, there was no asbestos, so that saves us some money. <laughs> Any, anyone else? Cool. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. I hope I did all right. You know? Oh, you, oh yeah, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to see pride. My pride and joy right here. What's funny about those, all those names are actually my friends. And that's how real they wanted to keep it. They made all my friends sign off on releases so they could actually use their names in the commercial. So all my friends, all, like their screenshot was that for like a month. Was that your real schedule? Yeah. And everything, like, it's crazy. So like everything that I'm doing, I had to do in 90 degree weather in a hoodie and a helmet. And I probably went through, no kidding, 30 shirts a day. Like they were actually printing slow roll shirts because I was so sweaty and we were using them so fast. So like you come to my house, I have like 40 <laughs> size large shirts. You don't have them. That's my friend's bike shop. For a bike shop, if anybody goes, no shot. Supposed to move a little faster. <laughs> but you get it. I mean, we can leave it rolling, but it, like I said, it was so amazing. And if you've ever, like, has anybody ever been in a uh, commercial shoot or a film or a movie or anything? No? So immediately you become like a local celebrity. And I'm not saying that because I'm saying that, like, the minute they lock your street down, like, everybody's in the window, like, <laughs> 
So like now, I can't, everywhere I go, people are like, you're the guy from Slow Roll, you're the Slow Roll guy. That's our, that's our 3500 right there. Much bigger than you, I missed that dude. Uh, but, uh, sorry, you guys didn't get to say. You can actually YouTube it. You can YouTube Jason Hall and check it out on there. And then we also did Best Bars in America uh, last year on Esquire Television. You can check that out. Uh, we'll be on HBO next month. You can check that out. Uh, yeah, I think that's it.